method, the how, a specific process for accomplishing something, especially an orderly, logical, or systematic way of instruction. One other note about the map diagram. You'll see that where mindset crosses over with motivation, I have the word inspiration. You're inspired, but you don't know which methods to employ or where to channel your energy. Where motivation and method intersect, you have implementation. In this case, your results are going to be limited to what you feel you deserve, what you feel you're capable of, and what you believe is possible because you lack the proper mindset. Where mindset and methods intersect, you have ideation. Your ambitions stay in your mind because you lack the motivation and energy to do anything about it. Where all three intersect, you have the limitless state. You have the fourth I, which is integration. It's just who you are. Throughout this book, you'll find exercises, studies, mental tools, and the results of exciting work being done both on the frontier of cognitive science and performance, as well as ancient wisdom. For example, how did ancient civilizations remember generations of knowledge before external storage devices like the printing press? We'll approach the three M's in turn. In part two, Limitless Mindset, you'll learn what is possible when you eradicate limiting beliefs. In part three, Limitless Motivation, you'll discover why your purpose is your power and keys to unleashing your drive and energy. In part four, Limitless Methods, you'll discover how to learn at your best with proven processes, the tools and techniques that will propel you forward toward the life you desire and deserve. And at the end of the book, I give you a 10-day plan to jumpstart your progress toward a limitless week and a limitless life. When you finish this book, you'll have the ability to be limitless in any area important to you, whether it's academic, health, career, relationships, or personal growth. Since I never truly got to study at the X-Men School, I created it for you in our online quick learning academy where people of all ages from 195 nations train with us daily to unleash their mental superpowers. Consider Limitless your textbook. It would be an honor to be your Professor X, and I'm so excited you've decided to take this journey with me. Class is now in session, and here's the best part. Your timing could not be any better. Wow, Jim, that is quite a story. I love how just in the first chapter you, you essentially gloss over, you know, one of, for me, one of the most moving and profound stories I've heard about someone's, you know, brain health and overcoming. And I think, certainly I do, and I think a lot of people relate to, at some point in their life, having some kind of internalized limitation something that was put on them that you know we've been carrying around and but what's really extraordinary about your story is that you know, it, your limitations are very real to say well these are real this is a brain injury it would be so easy for you to have lent into excuses and said well what could I possibly do mm. and I know we carry excuses and, and listen to your story I just have to ask you you know having overcome these very real objective limitations do you now truly believe that limitations like can be taken away that people can be limitless you know I believe that we all go through challenges and with challenges come change and as I mentioned in that chapter it's not about being perfect you know I'm certainly not perfect I don't even when it comes to learning I don't have a photographic memory you know but the goal is to advance beyond what we believe is possible you know in our lives and to be a role model for people around us that difficult times, as I'm sure everyone who's listening, we have these challenges. The difficult times, they could define you, they could diminish you, or that they could develop you. And uh, ultimately, we, we decide. And uh, when, when our family came to this country, and by the way, I love this, this conversational part. You know, this is something where I feel a lot of the listeners will get a lot of value out of because it's not scripted. And, um, you know, I'm an admirer of, of your work 
and the, you know what we could co-create with everyone listening right now. Um, you know, there are internal uh, limits and there's external limits. You know, when people are thinking about resources, my family they immigrated to the United States. My my father was 13. Both his parents had passed away at the age of when he was 13. They, they couldn't afford to to feed him, so he moved here with uh, with his aunt. And you know, typical story. My parents they you know didn't speak the language, and we lived in the back of a, a laundry mat that my mother worked at. You know, and my my grandmother was our primary caregiver because my parents had all these jobs. And you know, when she she lost her life to Alzheimer's, you know, I realized the power of of our memory. And a big part of this book is not just remembering facts and figures in foreign languages. People will learn that. It's remembering our life because if our life is worth living, it's worth remembering. You know, to love, to remember our loved ones, to remember the lessons. A lot of people learn something, but they repeat the mistakes because they didn't truly remember it. They date the same person, right? Or they make the same mistakes in business, or they eat the same, you know, poor food over and over again because they forget how they felt when they ate it. So it goes, it goes way beyond. And, um, and what struck me about what you were sharing your story is that not just remembering your life, but but. Going from being a passive participant to the protagonist of your own story,、mm. so changing the quality of your life in the moment, to moment to moment, by retelling the story that you have, and、uh, you know, you made this very interesting distinction between a limit and an obstacle. I just, I'd love to ask you, can、yeah. you just go into it a little bit more? Like, why is it important to use different language, and what is the difference between them? Yeah, I, I believe that words have a different effect on our on our brain, on our nervous system. Even changing little words, like、um, changing words from a lot of people say to themselves, "I got to pick up the kids, I got to go to work, I got to work out today and go to the gym." But if you change the word "God" to "get," you change that 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 O to the letter E. That's、God. a huge pivot. You know, I get to pick up the kids, I get to work out today, I get to to go to my job. It feels differently, and so、um, so talking about the power of language, I believe that. A lot of the the obstacles,、um, I believe, a lot of the limits we talk about is our lives. There are these limited ideas that we're entertaining, and they're not all real. And、uh, and the obstacles, there's there are objectively things that we have to face. And I believe that these obstacles, just like in the hero's journey, and you and I are you know fans of Joseph Campbell's work, they're there these trials to be able to to make us grow. You know the size of the the hero is determined by the size of the villain. If you're watching a movie and the villain is just you know kind of weak and mediocre, it's not a very exciting movie, right? It's the worst plot ending ever. Exactly. <laughs> Pushed him over. That was it. Exactly.、Hmm. Not not. But I know a lot of people right now are listening, and they've had you know some significant adversity, and a lot of people when they're able to get through it. And, and persevere. They come out saying, "Like, wow, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody, but I wouldn't change it for myself." You know, I found a strength. I found a meaning. I found a a mission because of it. And、um, and that's sometimes what what it's there for. These challenges lead to positive change. So an obstacle could be an opportunity, whereas a limit feels like the end. You know, I I know for myself, I've. Definitely hit so many limiting beliefs in my life, and you don't even know they're there because they feel so real. Like you just think that, oh, that's where it ends. It's not even visible to you. But when you have, when you create it as an obstacle, so for instance, with your brain injury, rather than seeing it as like a hard cap to your potential, you reframed it as sort of a, a, an obstacle, an opportunity to overcome and to triumph over as the hero of your story. And I think that's through adversity comes our advantages. I mean, think about. My two biggest challenges when I was growing up were learning and public speaking. And you know, the life has a sense of humor because what do I do almost every day of my life is I public speak on this thing called called learning. So I think struggles could lead to our our superpowers. So anybody who's listening to this right now and they have challenges for whatever reason you picked up this this audio. What I would encourage you is like we just we don't know, and there's that there's a reason. I believe that there's a reason they're here with us, listening, because just like in the hero's journey, when you call, you get this call to adventure, then everything everything opens up, right? These windows, these mentors, these teachers show up when we're ready to to learn. That's the key, he said. Come with me. I have something to show you. 
we walked back to the house where he took me into a room that I'd never seen before. It was filled wall to wall, floor to ceiling with books. Now remember, at this point in my life, I was not a fan of books. It was like being in a room full of snakes. But what made it even worse was that he started grabbing snakes from his shelves and handing them to me. I looked at the titles and realized these were biographies of incredible men and women throughout history, as well as some early personal growth books, such as The Magic of Thinking Big, The Power of Positive Thinking, and Think and Grow Rich. Jim, I want you to read one of these books a week. My first thought was, have you not been listening to anything I've been saying? I didn't ask this out loud, but I did respond, I don't know how I could do that. You know, reading doesn't come easily to me, and I have so much schoolwork to do. He held up a finger saying, don't let school interfere with your education. I later learned that he was paraphrasing a quote often attributed to Mark Twain. Look, I said, I understand how reading these books would be really helpful, but I don't want to make any promises I can't keep. He paused and then reached into his pocket, pulled out my bucket list, and started reading each one out loud. There was something about hearing my dreams in another person's voice that messed with my mind and my soul something fierce. Truth be told, many of the things on that list were things I wanted to do for my family, things my parents could never afford or would never have done for themselves, even if they could afford them. Hearing this read out loud moved me in ways I didn't think possible. It deeply tapped into my drive and purpose. We will unleash your motivation together in part three of this book. When he was finished, I told him I would do exactly what he suggested, though secretly I had no idea how I was going to accomplish that feat. Asking the right question. I went back to school after the weekend, armed with the books he'd given me. On my desk were now two piles, one that I had to read for school and one that I promised to read. The scale of what I agreed to registered with me. How was I going to make a dent in these piles when reading was such a labor for me? I was already struggling to get through the first pile. What was I going to do? Where would I get the time so I didn't eat I didn't sleep, I didn't exercise, I didn't watch television or spend time with friends. Instead, I practically lived at the library until one night when I passed out from sheer exhaustion and fell down a flight of stairs, sustaining yet another head injury. It wasn't until two days later that I woke up in the hospital. I thought I had died and maybe a part of me wished that I had. It was truly a dark and low point in my life. I was wasting away. My weight was down to about 117 pounds and I was so dehydrated that I was hooked up to IV bags. As miserable as I was, I said to myself, there has to be a better way. At that point, a nurse came into the room carrying a mug of tea with a picture of Albert Einstein on it the very same subject of the book report that inspired me to dig deep and study back in grade school. The quote next to his image said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. That's when it dawned on me. Maybe I was asking the wrong question. I started to wonder, what was my real problem? I knew I was a slow learner, but I had been thinking the same way about it for years. I realized that I was trying to solve my learning problems by thinking the way I'd been taught to think, to just work harder. But what if I could teach myself a better method to learn? What if I could learn in a way that was more efficient, effective, and even more enjoyable? What if I could learn how to learn faster? I committed in that very moment to finding that way. And with that commitment, my mindset began to shift. I asked the nurse for a course bulletin and flipped through it page by page. After a couple of hundred pages, I could find nothing but classes on what to learn. 
Spanish, history, math, science, but there were no classes teaching students how to learn. Learning how to learn. When I got out of the hospital, I was so intrigued by the idea of learning how to learn that I set my studies aside and focused only on the books that my mentor gave me, as well as books I found on adult learning theory, multiple intelligence theory, neuroscience, personal growth, educational psychology, speed reading, and even ancient mnemonics. I wanted to know what older cultures did to pass on knowledge before they had external storage devices like the printing press and computers. I was obsessed to solve this riddle. How does my brain work so I could work my brain? About a couple of months of deep immersion into my new self-directed studies, a light switch flipped on. My ability to focus was stronger. I started to understand new concepts because I was able to concentrate. I was no longer easily distracted. I could better recall information that I had studied weeks before with little difficulty. I had a new level of energy and curiosity. For the first time in my life, I could read and comprehend information in a fraction of the time that it used to take. My newfound competence gave me a sense of confidence that I never felt before. My daily life changed too. I was clear. I knew what to do to move myself forward and I unlocked an empowering and sustainable sense of motivation. With these results, my mindset changed and I started to believe that anything was possible. But I was also upset. It seemed to me all of my years of self-doubt and suffering could have been avoided if this critical method of meta-learning, learning how to learn, had been taught in school. I remember teachers telling me constantly to study and concentrate harder. Telling a child to do things like concentrate is like telling them to play the ukulele. It's very difficult to do without ever being taught how. And following the hero's journey, I couldn't help but share the treasures and lessons I learned. I started tutoring these methods to other students. The turning point came when I worked with a freshman who wanted to learn how to read faster, boost comprehension, and retain the information she was studying. She worked diligently and achieved her goal of reading 30 books in 30 days. I knew how she did it. I taught her the method you'll learn in chapter 14, but I wanted to know why. I discovered that her motivation was that her mother had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and she was determined to save her by studying books on health, wellness, and medicine. Months later, she called me, crying tears of joy, to tell me that her mother's cancer was in remission. It was in that moment that I realized that if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower, and our capacity to learn is limitless. We simply need to be shown how to access it. Seeing the way this woman's life was changed ignited in me a purpose allowing me to recognize what became my life's mission, to teach the mindset, motivation, and methods to upgrade your brain and learn anything faster so you can unlock your exceptional life. Over the course of more than two decades, I've developed a reliable and proven set of practical methods to enhance learning, many of which appear in this book. I have not only kept my promise to read a book a week, but continue to serve and support everyone from children labeled learning disabled to seniors with brain aging challenges. Our team dedicated to the memory of my grandmother passionately supports Alzheimer's research. And we believe education is every child's birthright, funding the creation of schools around the world from Guatemala to Kenya, providing health care, clean water, and learning for children in need via amazing organizations such as We Charity and Pencils of Promise. That's our mission, to build better, brighter brains. We're leaving no brain behind. I've taught these techniques to others with astonishing results, leading me to address more than 150,000 people and live audiences each year in every field imaginable 
to serve as the brain coach to top personalities in sports and entertainment, to train at many of the world's leading companies and universities, to head a large accelerated learning platform with students from 195 countries, and to host a top educational podcast called Quick Brain with tens of millions of downloads, and to have my teachings receive hundreds of millions of video views. This book is filled with lessons and practical advice I've learned over the years, along with wisdom and resources from many of the guest experts who have been featured on our show. I say all of this because having dedicated my life to researching and teaching this subject, I know what's inside this book. And more importantly, I know what's inside you. The label becomes the limitation. Adults have to be very careful with their external words because these quickly become a child's internal words. That's what happened with me in that moment. Whenever I struggled to learn, did badly on a quiz, wasn't picked for a team in gym class, or fell behind my other classmates, I would tell myself it was because my brain was broken. How could I possibly expect to do as well as others did? I was damaged. My mind didn't work like everyone else's. Even when I studied much harder than my schoolmates, my grades never reflected the effort I was putting in. Now, I was too stubborn to give up and managed to move on from grade to grade, but I was hardly thriving. While I was advanced in math because of the help of a few of my academically talented friends, I was horrible at most of the other subjects, especially classes like English, reading, foreign languages, and music. Then, in my freshman year of high school, things got to the point where I was at risk of failing English. My parents were called in by my teacher to discuss what I could do to muster a passing grade. She offered an extra credit project for me. I was to write a report comparing the lives and accomplishments of two geniuses, Leonardo da Vinci and Albert Einstein. She told me that if I did a good job on this report, she would be able to give me enough points to make sure I passed the class. I consider this to be a huge opportunity, a chance to hit the reset button on what had been a difficult start to my high school career. I committed everything I had to writing the best report I possibly could. I spent hours and hours and hours at the library after school, trying to learn everything I could learn about these two brilliant minds while working on this paper. Interestingly, during that research, I came across multiple mentions that Albert Einstein and Leonardo da Vinci each struggled with alleged learning difficulties. After weeks of effort, I typed up the final report. I was so proud of what I'd done, and I had the pages professionally bound. This report was a statement for me. It was the way I was going to announce to the world what I was capable of doing. The day the report was due, I put it in my backpack, so excited about handing it in to my teacher, and even more excited about the response I anticipated she would have to what I had done. I planned to give it to her at the end of class, so I sat through whatever we were doing that day, trying to concentrate, but constantly finding my thoughts, flitting back to the look I expected to see on my teacher's face when I presented her with the report. But then she threw me a curveball I was not prepared to hit. About halfway through the class period, the teacher ended her lesson and told the students that she had a surprise for them. She said that I had been working on an extra credit report and that she would like me to present it to the class now. I had spent most of my school life trying to shrink so small that I wouldn't be called on in class. When you are broken, you don't feel like you have much to offer. I was beyond shy and I didn't like to draw attention to myself. My superpower back then was being invisible. I was also deathly afraid of speaking in public. I'm not exaggerating here. If you hook me up to a heart monitor at that moment, I might have broken the machine. On top of this, I could barely breathe. There was simply no way I was going to be able to stand in front of everyone and talk to them about the work I'd done. So I took the only option I saw available to me. I'm sorry. I didn't do it, I stuttered. 
just barely getting the words out of my mouth. The expression of disappointment on my teacher's face, so different from the expression I'd fantasized earlier, was so profound that my heart nearly broke. But I just couldn't do what she wanted me to do. When class was over, after everyone had left, I threw my report in the garbage, and along with it, a big part of my self-respect and worth. You are closer than you think. Somehow, in spite of all the troubles I had in school, I managed to get into a local university. I thought being a freshman in college meant I had a last opportunity to make a fresh start. I dreamt about making my family proud, and to showing the world, and more importantly, myself, that I did have the potential to succeed. I was in a new environment. College professors taught differently than high school teachers did. And no one at this college had any preconceived notions about me. I worked my butt off, but I actually wound up doing even worse in my college classes than high school. A few months into this, I started to face my reality. I couldn't see the point of wasting time and money that I did not have. I was ready to quit school altogether. I told a friend about my plans, and he suggested that before I made a decision. I go with him to visit his family for the weekend. He thought that getting me away from the campus might give me some perspective. When we arrived, his father showed me around their property before dinner. Along the way, he asked how school was going for me. It was the worst question anyone could ask me at that time, and I'm sure my response stunned him. I erupted into tears. Not holding back the tears, crying, but straight up bawling. I could see he was taken aback by this, but his innocent question had broken the dam, holding back so many pent up emotions. I told him the whole boy with the broken brain story while he listened patiently. When I was finished, he looked me directly in the eyes. Jim, why are you in school? He said. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? I didn't have immediate answers to any of these questions because no one had ever asked me them before. But I felt as though I needed to answer them now. I started to speak, and he stopped me. He tore a couple of pieces of paper from his pocket diary and told me to write down my answers. In this book, I'll show you how to ask questions to learn and achieve anything. Faster. I spent the next several minutes writing a bucket list. When I was finished, I began folding up the papers and preparing to put them in my pocket. But as I was doing so, my friend's father grabbed the pages out of my hands. I freaked out because I didn't think what I'd written was going to be read by anyone else, especially this complete stranger. But he opened the pages and read while I stewed. In my discomfort, it seemed as though he took hours to read what I'd written, though I'm sure it was only a minute or two. When he finished, he said, "You're this close, holding his index fingers on his right and left hands about a foot apart, to getting every single thing on this list." That statement seemed absurd to me. I told him I couldn't crack this list if I had ten lifetimes. But then he took his fingers and, without expanding the distance between them, placed one on each side of my head. The space he was describing was my brain. I have no way of knowing how your life journey has taken you to this book. I'm guessing that at least part of that journey is accepting the confines put upon you, either by others or by yourself. You can't read fast enough to keep up with everything you need to know. Your mind is not agile enough to succeed at work. You're not motivated to get things done, or you lack the energy to reach your goals, and so on. The nature of this book is transcending, ending the trance, the mass hypnosis and lies that we learned from our parents, programming, media, or marketing that suggests we are limited. That somehow we are not enough, not capable of being, doing, having, 
creating, or contributing. Belief that you are limited might be holding you back from your biggest dreams as well, at least up until now. But I promise you that none of your beliefs truly constrain who you are. We all have vast potential inside of us, untapped levels of strength, intelligence, and focus, and the key to activating these superpowers is unlimiting yourself. For more than 25 years, I've worked with people of all ages, nationalities, races, socioeconomic statuses, and education levels. What I've discovered is that no matter where you come from, no matter what challenges you face, you have incredible potential that's just waiting to be tapped. Every person, regardless of age, background, education, gender, or personal history, can advance beyond what they believe they deserve and is possible. And that includes you. Working together, you'll come to think of your own limitations as an outmoded concept. Now, in this book, I refer to superheroes and superpowers. Why is that? First of all, I am a geek in that way. Because of my childhood brain injury and learning challenges, I escaped into comic books and movies to inspire me during my struggles. I realized that my favorite ones all shared the same pattern, the hero's journey. Joseph Campbell's classic plot structure appears in nearly all famed adventures, including The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Eat, Pray, Love, The Hunger Games, Rocky, The Lord of the Rings, Alice in Wonderland, The Matrix, and so many more. Think of your favorite story, or one of the films or books I just mentioned. Does it sound familiar? The hero, for example, Harry Potter, starts out in the ordinary world, the world they've always known. The hero then hears the call to adventure. They have a choice to ignore and stay in the ordinary world where nothing will change or heed the call and enter the new world of the unknown. If they heed the call, as Neo did with the red pill in the Matrix, they meet their guide or mentor, such as Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid who trains and prepares him or her to overcome obstacles and realize new levels of fulfillment. The hero is introduced to new powers, new skills, and encouraged to utilize their current abilities like never before. They transcend perceived limitations, learn a new way of being, and eventually face their trials. When they return back to the ordinary world, like Dorothy going back to Kansas, they take with them the ultimate boon, the treasure, emotions, strength, clarity, and wisdom they discovered from their adventure. They then share their lessons and gifts with others. The hero's journey is the perfect structure to lend power and purpose to your personal story. In Limitless, you are the superhero. One of my core beliefs is that human potential is one of the only infinite resources we have in the world. Most everything else is finite, but the human mind is the ultimate superpower. There is no limit to our creativity, imagination, determination, our ability to think, reason, or learn. Yet, this resource is also among the least tapped. All of us can be the heroes of our own story, dipping into the well of our potential every single day and never having that well run dry. But so few of us approach our lives this way. That's why I wrote this book, to help you realize that no matter where you are or where you've been, you absolutely can free yourself to go from limits to liberation. That might be the only extra you need to transition from the ordinary world to the extraordinary world. This book is going to provide you with that extra. What you'll get within these pages is a series of tools that will help you cast off your perceived restrictions. You're going to learn how to unlimit your brain. You're going to learn how to unlimit your drive. You're going to learn how to unlimit your memory, your focus, 
your habits. If I am your mentor in this hero's journey, then this book is your map to master your mind, motivation, and methods to learn how to learn. And once you've done that, you will be limitless. Here's the door. You know it's waiting on the other side. Walk through it. Part one, free your mind. Chapter one, becoming limitless. I want to welcome you to the audio version of my very first book. This is 28 years in the making. And for those of you who are familiar with our podcast and all the videos that we have online, you know that this is a real mission to build better, brighter brains, really to leave no brain left behind. So I want to thank you for joining me on this audio version of my book. Now, it is not exactly the same as the print version that also serves as a workbook with various exercises to write in it. So the print or digital version is a great supplement to this audio. This audiobook does have a wonderful bonus feature though. At the end of each chapter, I am joined by a friend, Mia Lux, who is a self-described recovering lawyer. She's been a teacher, a stand-up comedian, a podcast host, and we have great energy together. So I invited her to join me in a conversation in this book. Gives me somebody to experiment with and to practice some of these tools with. She will highlight some of the key lessons and we'll probe a little deeper together in some subjects in what we call chapter chats. So at the end of each chapter, we'll have a conversation around the content and how to apply it. And for me, I think there are a lot of gems that'll come out of it. Now, before you begin listening, make sure you get all of the book's bonus resources. I mean, these are the recipes, the videos. I will teach you how to remember names, but in the resource section, you could watch me demonstrate it to a room full of people, where I pull people live on stage. When we go through the reading and I teach you how to do the speed reading in the resource section, you could actually watch a masterclass where I take you through the process of teaching you how to read faster and improve your comprehension. There are so much information in the resources and it's free with this audio. And so all you have to do is go to limitlessbook.com forward slash resources. And you're gonna wanna do that now because I will refer and be using many of these tools during our journey to becoming limitless. So go to limitlessbook.com forward slash resources for all of these additional tools. Now, are you ready? Let's begin our adventure together. Introduction. What is your one wish? Seriously. If a genie offered to grant you one wish, but only one, what would you ask for? Limitless wishes, of course. Now imagine that I'm your learning genie, and I could grant you one learning wish. Any one subject, any skill. What one thing would you want to learn? What subject or skill would be the equivalent of asking for infinite wishes? to learn how to learn, right? If you really knew how to learn smarter, faster, better, then you could apply that to everything. You could learn to master your mindset or your motivation or use the methods to pick up Mandarin, marketing, music, martial arts, mathematics. There would be no limit. You'd be a mental superhero. Anything would be possible because you would be limitless. 
My mission with this book is to grant you this wish in the pages that follow. Let's start by saying how much I respect and admire you. By investing in this book and now listening to it, you are far ahead of most of the population who simply accept their present conditions and constraints. You are part of a small group of individuals who not only want more for your lives, but also are willing to do what it takes to get results. In other words, you are the hero of this story. You've answered the call to adventure. I believe the ultimate adventure we are all on is to reveal and realize our fullest potential and inspire others to do the same. Finding Professor X's School There's a serendipitous coda to this story. As I mentioned, I regularly offer brain coaching to CEOs and their teams. A few years ago, Jim Chiniopoulos, then CEO of 20th Century Fox, invited me to do a coaching session with his executive team. I went onto the film lot on a Friday morning and spent several hours with top staff members. They were particularly open to my message and they instantly connected with the techniques. When the session was over, Jim came to me and said, that was incredible. It was one of the very best training sessions we've ever held. I was delighted to hear this, of course. Who doesn't love positive feedback? Later, during a tour of the lot, my eye landed on a poster of the Wolverine movie, which was scheduled to come out later that year. I pointed to the poster and said, I can't wait to see that film. I'm a huge fan. Oh, you like superheroes, Jim said? Love them. The X-Men have played a major role in my life. I went on to tell him about my childhood brain injury, how comic books helped me learn to read, and my search for Professor X's school. He smiled at me. You know, we have another 30 days of shooting the next X-Men movie in Montreal. Why don't you come along and spend a week on set? The actors would love to work with you. There was no way I was going to turn this down. I'd never been on a movie set before, and this wasn't just any movie set. It was an X-Men movie set. The next morning, we got on the plane they called the X-Jet. The other passengers included most of the mutant cast, and I found myself sitting between Jennifer Lawrence and Holly Berry. This was turning out to be the best day ever. On the plane and the next week on set, I got to share some of my brain tips for speed reading scripts and for remembering lines with some of the extraordinary cast and crew. And guess what? The very first scene I got to see them shoot took place in none other than Professor X's school. The very place I'd spent endless days imagining and searching for when I was a kid. It was such a surreal moment for me. What's one of your dreams? One that is ever present, like a splinter in your brain. Imagine it in vivid detail. Visualize it, feel it, believe in it, and work daily for it. Amazingly, this is not the best part of the story. When I got back from the trip, I came home to find a package waiting for me. It was huge, about the size of a large flat screen TV. I opened the package and pulled out an enormous frame photograph of me with the entire cast of X-Men. The photo had a note from the chairman which read, Jim, thank you so much for sharing your superpowers with all of us. I know you've been looking for your superhero school ever since you were a child. Here's your class photo. You could see this photo on my Twitter, on my Facebook profile, that's the cover photo. Uh, if you have the print copy of this book, it's also there. That's me with uh, Hugh Jackman, his arm around me, and I'm actually wearing a Wolverine t-shirt. And so it's, it is a prized possession for sure. Unlimiting together. Unlimiting. Noun. The act or process of casting aside inaccurate and restrictive perceptions of one's potential and embracing the reality that, with the right mindset, motivation, and methods, there are no limitations.
For so much of my life, I allowed myself to be defined by my perceived restrictions. I'd gotten what I thought was a terrible break when I was a kid, and I was convinced that this had set the course for a compromised future. But with the help of some key people, I came to discover that my perceived restrictions were not really restrictions at all. They were merely obstacles I needed to overcome or limitations I needed to unlearn. And when I did, what I could learn to be or do each day became limitless. Becoming limitless is not just about accelerated learning, speed reading, or having an incredible memory. Yes, you will learn how to do all of that and more. But being limitless is not about being perfect. It's about progressing beyond what you currently believe is possible. Just as you've learned limits from your family, culture, and life experiences, you can unlearn them. These constraints are only temporary obstacles that you can learn to overcome. What I have come to find over my years of working with people is that most everyone limits and shrinks their dreams to fit their current reality. We convince ourselves that the circumstances we are in, the beliefs we've accepted, and the path we are on is who we are and who we will always be. But there is another choice. You can learn to unlimit and expand your mindset, your motivation, and your methods to create a limitless life. When you do what others won't, you could live how others can't. By reading this book, you have taken an important step. Remember, one step in a better direction can completely change your destination. The key when you're taking your steps is to have a map a model for success. Armed with this, there's no trial or dragon you can't overcome. So here's the limitless model. You could see this in the print version of the book. You could also get everything here at limitlessbook.com forward slash resources. Limitlessbook.com forward slash resources. The limitless model. You can learn to be, do, have, and share with no constraints. I wrote this book to prove this to you. If you are not learning or living at your full potential, if there is a gap between your current reality and your desired reality, here's the reason. There is a limit that must be released and replaced in one of three areas. Now, I want you to do this thought exercise. I want you to imagine in your mind's eye a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram, three circles intersecting with each other. And I'm gonna go through all three circles and their intersection points. And each of the circles start with the letter M because I like to alliterate often because it helps you to remember it. So there are three circles that intersect. There are three M's. The first M circle is mindset. The second is motivation. And the third, methods. So let's go into these three limits. A limit in your mindset. You entertain a low belief in yourself, your capabilities, what you deserve, or what is possible. A limit in your motivation. You lack drive, purpose, or energy to take action. A limit in your methods. You are taught and are acting on a process that is not effective to create the result you desire. This applies to an individual, a family, an organization. We all have our unique story of struggles and strengths. Whatever your situation happens to be, here's the best part. You're not alone. I'm going to help you become limitless in your own way within the three-part framework you're about to learn. Limitless mindset, limitless motivation, and limitless methods. Let me break it down. Mindset, the what. Deeply held beliefs, attitudes, and assumptions we create about who we are, how the world works, what we are capable of and deserve, and what is possible. Motivation, the why. The purpose one has for taking action the energy required for someone to behave in a particular way. I'm so stupid. I don't understand. 
I am too dumb to learn. These were my mantras growing up. There wasn't a day that went by that I didn't tell myself that I was slow, dumb, and that I would never learn to read, much less amount to anything later in life. If a pill existed that could supercharge my brain and make me smarter in one swallow, as there was in the 2011 movie Limitless starring Bradley Cooper, I would have given anything to take it. I wasn't the only one who felt the way I did about myself. If you'd ask my teachers when I was a kid, many of them would have said I was the last person they expect to be writing this book for you. Back then, they would have been surprised to know that I was reading a book, let alone writing one. This all stems from an incident in kindergarten that completely altered the course of my life. I was in class one day, and there were sirens outside the window. Everyone in the classroom took notice, and the teacher looked out and said she saw fire trucks. The entire class responded to this information the way kindergartens do. We immediately rushed to the windows. I was particularly excited because by that point, I was already obsessed with superheroes. I still am. To me, firefighters were the closest thing to real life superheroes that I knew. I bolted to the window with everyone else. The only problem was that I wasn't tall enough to be able to look down at the fire trucks. One kid went to grab his chair to stand on, and that inspired the rest of us to do the same. I ran back to my desk to get mine, pushing it right up against the huge iron radiator that ran along the bottom of the windows. I got up on my chair, saw the firefighters, and completely lit up. This was so exciting. My eyes stared and my mouth gasped as I watched these courageous heroes in action with their seemingly impenetrable uniforms and their bright red vehicle. But then one of the other kids grabbed my chair from beneath me, which caused me to lose balance and go flying headfirst into the radiator. I hit the metal heater extremely hard and I started losing blood. The school rushed me to the hospital where doctors tended to my wounds, but they were candid with my mother afterwards. The injury to my brain was not mild. My mother said I was never quite the same after that. Where I had been an energized, confident, and curious child before, now I was noticeably shut down and had a new difficulty learning. I found it extremely hard to focus. I couldn't concentrate, and my memory was awful. As you can imagine, school became an ordeal for me. Teachers would repeat themselves until I learned to pretend to understand. And while all the other kids were learning to read, I couldn't make any sense out of the letters. Do you remember getting in those reading circles, passing around the book, and having to read out loud? For me, that was the worst. Nervously waiting as the book crept closer and closer, only to look at the page and not understand one word. I think that's where my crippling fear of public speaking initially came from. It would take me another three years to be able to read, and it continued to be a struggle and an uphill battle for a long time after that. I'm not sure I ever would have learned to read if it weren't for the heroes I met and saw in comic books. Regular books couldn't hold my attention at all, but my fascination with comics drove me to keep pushing myself until I could read their stories without waiting for someone else to read them to me. I would read them by flashlight under my covers late at night. Those stories gave me hope that one person could overcome impossible odds. My favorite superheroes growing up were the X-Men, not because they were the strongest, but because they were misunderstood and weirdly different. I felt like I could relate to them. They were mutants. They didn't fit into society, and people who didn't understand them shunned them. That was me, minus the superpowers. The X-Men were outcasts, and so was I. I belonged in their world. I grew up in Westchester County, a suburb of New York City, and I was super excited one night to discover that, according to the comic books, Professor Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters was located near me. 
When I was nine years old, I would get on my bike nearly every weekend to ride around my neighborhood looking for the school. I was obsessed. I thought if only I could locate it, I would find in that school a place where I finally fit in, a place where it was safe to be different, a place where I could discover and develop my own superpowers. The Boy with the Broken Brain In the real world, life was not very kind. It was around this time that my grandmother, who lived with us and helped raise me, started showing advanced signs of dementia. Watching someone you love lose their mind and memory is hard to describe. It was like losing her over and over until she passed. She was my world, and combined with my learning challenges, she is why I am so passionate about brain health and fitness. Back in school, I was bullied and made fun of, and not just on the playground, but in the classroom too. I remember one day in elementary school, a teacher, frustrated because I wasn't getting the lesson, pointed at me and said, that's the boy with the broken brain. I was just crushed to realize that this was how she saw me and that others probably saw me the same way. Often when you put a label on someone or something, you create a limit. And for those listening, you know, what could a cold heart adventure look like? Like, you know, in our lives, we, we so rarely treat ourselves and our lives as the profound mythical experience that, that we're actually having. So if, if someone's listening to this book and they're like, I don't know, have I had the cold to adventure? Yes. Has something happened? Like, what could that look like for people? I would say to anyone listening to this right now, if you're looking for a sign to be able to go on this adventure of, of living and being the best version of yourself, that this is your call right now. This is your sign that you're listening to this and that you, you are ready. I, I believe, really truly believe that when the student is ready that the teacher does appear and calls could come in every area of our life. The only thing is we have to be paying attention to it. We have to be observing. Later on, we're going to talk about building an incredible memory, right? And being observant. There's so much stimulus out there. How do you focus in a world full of distraction? And part of it has to do with the dominant questions that we ask. Because when we ask a question, you ask and you shall receive. If you start looking for things, they're going to start showing up. It's very similar to the recent podcast you and I did about lucid dreaming where if you ask this question before you go to bed, all of a sudden your mind starts pondering and starts building and imagining around it. And if people truly understood how powerful their mind is, they wouldn't say or think something they didn't want to be true. I mean, our minds are this incredible gift. And I wrote this book because I wanted to show people just how amazing they really are. I just want to track back to the title of your book. Limitless, upgrade your brain, learn anything faster, and unlock your exceptional life. Because that word exceptional, it doesn't get used very often. So can you just tell us, like, what does exceptional mean? What does it mean to you? Why did it end up in the title? You know, the, the word exceptional, we talked about how words have an effect on the brain. And it had a, an, a, an interesting association for me growing up when I was in elementary school going through these challenges. I would hang out with the, uh, the geeks and the nerds in class, not because I had the grades that they had, but because they also loved comic books and video games and playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I remember one day in class, uh, one of the teachers, educators came in and said, we have formed a special group called MASP, and it's called the More Able Student Program. The program is called More Able Student Program, MASP. And they went through and hand-selected different students in that class to be part of this, this advanced group. And, um, and these were the exceptional kids, right? The ones that were special. And myself, I wasn't included. I was the only one in that group that wasn't included in our clique. And so I, I felt really left out. You know, I was ready the boy with the broken brain. And I found another kid who was on the other side of the bell curve along with me. We created a group called LASP, Less Able Student Program. <laughs> and it was just the two of us in this group. But the reason why I use the word exceptional is people believe that 
Genius is limited to an elite few. And what I've realized in almost three decades of research and teaching this around the world is that we all have the potential to be exceptional, that we all have the ability to be special. It's just school teaches us what to learn and what to think and what to focus on, what to remember. But again, not how to learn, how to think, how to focus and how to remember. The question is not how smart you are. It's about how are you smart. It's not how smart you are, it's how are you smart. And when you find the way that you learn your best, then you can really lead an exceptional life. That genius is not born, it is built and it is made. And that's why I wrote this book, so we could all be exceptional. Well, this first chapter has really shown how amazing you are. And I think as a role model, as a teacher, this is an exciting moment. So let's answer the call and go to chapter two. Chapter two, why this matters now. I'm a firm believer that we all have incredible superpowers that are waiting to be awakened. I'm not talking about the ability to fly, create ironclad armor, or shoot lasers from your eyes, but real life practical abilities like flying through books, ironclad memory, laser focus, boundless creativity, clear thinking, mindfulness, superior mental attitude, and more. We are all superheroes in one way or another.